Hi there, it's Jenny with the Everything Housewife and it is DIY month on my website and today I wanna talk about reupholstering furniture. Uh, something that's not often talked about is the tools that you will need for upholstery and uh, you need a lot of different supplies depending on the type of project that you will be doing. Uh, my first upholstery project that I ever tackled were two chairs uh, from the 1800s uh, that came from my husband's side of the family. But the biggest project, reupholstery project, that I have ever done <laughs> was a white Chanel sofa. Um, and that, completing that project for that sofa uh, was the most challenging and difficult project um, in all the projects that I've ever tackled. And uh, lucky for me, lucky for me, I don't think I could have completed that project except that I had someone who worked in upholstery who was telling me what to do. So when it came time to buy supplies, you can order your supplies online, or you could go to your traditional Joann's fabric stores. However, I would not recommend that. Upholstery supplies, ordering them online, uh, for example, the foam, can be very, very expensive. I actually found a local upholstery shop who sold me supplies wholesale. And then I would talk to the owner of the shop and I would tell him what my sofa looked like and he would tell me exactly what I needed to do. And I don't know that I could have completed that project um, without his know-how, but I learned some valuable lessons in the process. And one of the things that I learned um, is that you need the right tools and you need the right supplies. And had he not been communicating to me what those tools and what those supplies were, I would have been completely clueless as I took apart my sofa. Uh, and a lot of people discover that. They will tackle an upholstery pro project and every piece of furniture is different. So when you start taking a piece of furniture apart, that pro project will not look necessarily like something um, that you watched online. So it would do you uh, some good to watch many different uh, people upholstering many different types of furniture before you tackled an upholstery project. Um, so to start off, I'm gonna share, you, share with you some of the things that I learned, some basic things. Um, yes, you need to purchase foam. Uh, yes, it needs to be a good quality foam. Um, and, and I would recommend getting that from a, see if you can find a lo local reupholstery shop that will sell you uh, the supplies for that. But then there's many other supplies that you might need. So I want to start with the antique chairs that I reupholstered. Um, those were done in a white Chanel fabric uh, with piping around the edge, tufted covered buttons, and then the base of the chair um, was in a taupe fabric. Uh, so first I want to talk about um, Tufting. We'll start with tufting. Um, tufting uh, is where uh, you you tuck the fabric in. So if you ever see a tufted piece of furniture, it will have buttons all over it, <laughs> and those buttons are covered in fabric. So what those covered fabric buttons look like, and I, and I'll show you, is um, it's just a plastic button and you will cover it with fabric, and then you will insert the back. And there's a special tool that comes with it. And then to actually insert it into the, uh, the chair or sofa itself, you have to purchase these really, really long needles. Okay, these are, these are what the, the needles look like. They're called upholstery needles. And I actually didn't use thread, um, to put the buttons on, I used bead wiring because I was scared the thread was gonna break and I actually think that it did break. So this is jewelry bead wiring. The, the wiring actually looks like this. It's very flexible, but I threaded it and you need these really long needles because you're gonna have to punch it through the furniture and pull, pull the button tight so it actually makes a tuft in it. So 
If you plan on doing tufting, you're gonna need these needles. And those covered buttons, um, you can just get those at Joann's, that's, that's not a big deal. The other thing that I learned on that project was I learned how to do a twin piping. Now I make piping for all my pillows. I buy piping in bulk. This is the piping that I buy, and I buy it in bulk, obviously not just because you know I've reupholstered furniture, but if you've ever been on my, on my website, I make lots of holiday pillows, um, and so I'll always put uh, piping cording um, around the edge. I'll cover this in fabric. Twin piping, and there's plenty of YouTube videos on how to do this online, but but you need to know this. This, this is, twin piping so you'll actually use two pieces um, of that cording and it's so sewn into a twin twin pipe now what people don't realize is most upholstery projects there's very little sewing <laughs> this to put twin piping on actually i used hot glue as a lot of upholsters do this is not hand stitched around um around your chair or the arms of your chair. This is hot glue gunned on, okay? And so you'll realize tackling an upholstery project, the cushions and the pillows, yes, you'll sew. But the vast majority of stuff, you'll be using a nail gun or a staple gun. And I wanna show you the staple gun that I use. And I've had other people borrow this gun from me um, for their upholstery projects. A lot of people make the mistake, um, and it's not that you can't get the project done. You can get the project done with the hand held, um, hand stamper guns that are not air compressor. You can get the project done with that. I, however, do not recommend using that. That would be absolutely exhausting on a big project. Maybe if you're just reupholstering your dining room chairs, just the covers, sure, you can use the staple gun. But you need an air compressor gun if you are going to be doing um, furniture. And I also don't I wanna, I wanna let you know that you don't wanna use super heavy duty staples in it. Let me see if I can find. The staples that I used, are these ones right here. And you don't wanna use super heavy duty staples because you're gonna make mistakes and then you're gonna to have to pull the staples out. And if the staples are hard to get out, it is a complete and total nightmare. And, uh, and so I recommend, yes, having an air compressor gun, but not using the biggest, bulkiest staples that you can find because then they're hard to pull out. Um, and that kind of leads me to uh, my next step. When you're sewing your cushions, when you're sewing cushions, um, upholsters use, they, they, you're not gonna buy a bunch of little baby zippers at Joann's. Okay, you're gonna have to buy bulk long zipper and um, you actually have to thread the zipper onto it. I keep this stuff on hand once again because I like making holiday pillows, decorative holiday pillows. Um, and so I always buy zipper in bulk. I always buy cording in bulk um, because I do a lot of other projects with it. For upholstery, if you're doing a sofa, you have to have an extra long zipper for the cushion. Um, so just keep that in mind. You're not gonna, um, they do sell this at Joann's, but I didn't buy this at Joann's. This is like a huge bulk amount. And it was actually cheaper. What you'll pay for a single strip of zipper on Joann's, you can actually order this kind of stuff, a huge long section of this on Amazon for almost the same price. And you'll have 10 times as much. Now the question is, what are you gonna do with the extra? Well, you're gonna have to do some more crafts and you can look at my website <laughs> and go look at some of my holiday pillows, okay? That's what you can do with your extra zipper. Um, the other, the other thing um, is you're gonna want a mallet, a rubber mallet, especially if you plan on doing uh, on your furniture the uh, the nail head furniture as decoration. Furniture is something that you can get really creative with. My husband and I, when we first reupholstered our sofa. 
Um, we made changes to it. It had a curved bottom. We ripped off that piece of wood and put a flap piece of wood bottom on it. Um, we also, um, I considered, I considered doing nail, nail head um, finishing on it. I didn't end up doing that on that piece of furniture, but you're gonna want a rubber mallet if you intend to do any nail head um, uh, uh, detailing on your piece of furniture. Um, something else uh, that that is really important to know is when you're doing a sofa, there's different types of fabric that's used. You have your very, very expensive fabric that will be, um, you know, upholstery decorators fabric that will be on the exterior of the sofa. But if you were to look under your sofa right now, look underneath the cushions and also look underneath the bottom of the sofa, there's usually this black material and it's like a tacking material. It's a really, really cheap fabric because it's just there to cover up that big mess that's underneath your sofa. You do not want to cover the underneath of your sofa um, with, with an expensive fabric. Your upholstery fabric will be very, very expensive. Um, and so you use a cheap fabric to go underneath. Um, there's, there's a lot of, um, if, if I had to give any suggestions, let me share with you some things that I learned uh, reupholstering uh, my own furniture. Uh, first of all, if you tackle the project, you have to finish the project. You don't have a choice. <laughs> you have to finish the project. And so you need to be prepared mentally because you don't really know how a piece of furniture um, will be upholstered until you kind of start taking it apart. And every piece of furniture is different. Uh, some things, uh, the only thing that I had to hand sew um, was the piping around the arms of my sofa. And technically I could have used a twin piping and hot glued it. I now, I now realize that, but I didn't realize that at the time because I was trying to create the original design of the sofa. But you're really gonna have to think about it. When you are doing the fabric on your sofa, I have seen people reupholster sofas and they don't pull the fabric tight. You really want to pull that fabric super snug because people are going to sit on that sofa. They might even, and I highly recommend that you never do this and that you don't let people do it, but it just happens. Do not sit on the arms of your sofa. That is a good way to ruin your furniture very, very quickly because it will eventually get a dip in the arm and then this, it doesn't matter how high of quality, I mean, you can use higher quality foams and batting, but it doesn't matter how high of quality um, you're using, eventually if people keep sitting on the arm, you're gonna get a dip in the arm and that's when furniture looks like it needs to be replaced. So just don't sit on the arms of your sofa. Cushions are easy to fix. There's a lot of things that you can do at home to revamp a sofa that is starting to need help. Um, but one of the things that people neglect to do when they are reupholstering their own furniture is they will not pull the fabric tight and then it will get these like wrinkles in it. It will get these wrinkles because the fabric is sagging. You need to pull that fabric super tight. If you are reupholstering a so sofa, it is a two person job during certain phases of the sofa because you will need to flip the entire sofa upside down. And so you're gonna have to have assistance to do that. And so for those things, my husband helped me um, with the sofa and we did a lot of it together. We removed all the staples together and then we helped pull fabric together. Um, I reupholstered my sofa in this beautiful white Chanel. I did white cording on it with a taupe cushion. It was beautiful um, and I actually had that sofa for seven years, a white Chanel, and it stayed in really good condition. Um, I only got rid of it, it just didn't fit in my new uh, living rooms when we, when we moved. Um, but it really, really was um, uh, empowering for me 
to know that I could do that because now I look at pieces of furniture that I've purchased and as things um, need a little revamp, um, even right now I have some furniture that I really need to look at the cushions and what ways can I repair them or there's a little bit of sagging. Um, I, I know how to use uh, the materials uh, to, to revamp furniture that I've purchased. Um, a lot of times family heirlooms, those are the types of pieces that, that you do want to reupholster over time so that you do keep them in the family. If you don't switch out the fam uh, fabric um, over time, you're, you're just not going to love that piece of furniture as much. It's important if you have family heirlooms to reupholster them so that they continue to be a piece of furniture that you would keep in your home unless you have a really, really old style. But fabric ages, fabric wears out, but the bones of furniture, that's wood, that's solid wood. Um, and so there's a lot that you can do there. Um, I would encourage every DIYer to at some point tackle an upholstery project. Um, when styles and trends um, are changing, uh, Usually new styles of furniture, when they first come out, new styles of fabric, it's really, really expensive to purchase that sofa. And at the time I reupholstered my sofa, it was when light colored sofas uh, with white piping, two-toned piping and um, tufting was just really becoming super trendy. And so those pieces of furniture to purchase them were several thousand dollars. Now you can buy tufted furniture anywhere. You could get it at your local TJ Maxx. And, um, but at the time, at the time, it was really hard to find those piece, pieces of furniture. And it was time for me to replace my sofa. And so, because I'm a DIYer, <laughs> I decided I was just gonna tackle it. And um, so I did a lot of research and I chatted with the experts. I went down and bought supplies from them. And so the cost of me reupholstering my entire sofa was between three and four hundred dollars. But at that time, uh, those sofas were going from fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars. So for me, it was a fun project and I really enjoyed it. And it was also really stressful because I knew that I, you know, I had to, I had to finish. I didn't have a sofa if I didn't finish the project. So just be aware if you start the project, you have to finish it. <laughs> or you're gonna have to go buy a whole new sofa. Um, but anyway, uh, this is another another DIY project uh, that, that I've checked off my list. There's one thing I forgot to mention that I wanted to share. When you're cutting foam, you just use an electric kitchen knife. That's what they use at the upholstery shops. So, you don't have to get all crazy with your supplies. You can just get in your kitchen. Anyway, I hope you're enjoying DIY month. I hope you're enjoying looking at some of the projects uh, that I've tackled. I hope it inspires you to attempt some things in your own home. You can do it. You can do it. I had never reupholstered a sofa before. Um, and if you have a little bit of basic sewing skills, you can do a cushion. It's, it's not that serious. You gotta learn how to put in a zipper. But if you learn how to put in a zipper, it's just sewing straight lines together. So um, anyway, be inspired, be encouraged, go tackle that project. And go visit the everythinghousewife.com, go see what we've got going on, and subscribe to my blog.